Hi guys and welcome back. This is the channel where we talk about toys, gadgets, wristwatches and all the things that men like to collect. In this episode we are going to talk about the things you need to think about when you take wristwatches with you on the road. Welcome to Timberwolf's Den. Okay, before we get started, the first thing we have to do, of course, is to do a wristwatch check. Today, I am wearing my Bulova Accutron Space View. Uh, this is actually a 50, almost 50 year old watch um, that I acquired recently. Um, but as tempted as I am to talk about it, I'm not going to talk about that today. Instead, let's get on with the rest of the video. Right, so it kind of feels like it's been a long time since I last sat at this desk. Uh, but that's because I've been on the road. Uh, my wife and I have been doing a bit of traveling, including a couple of weeks in Europe, uh, specifically in Germany and the UK. The first part of the trip consisted of a few days in Germany, first Heidelberg and then Berlin. My stepfather has a house in Heidelberg, so this offered us an opportunity to visit him. Heidelberg is located on the Neckar River in the southwestern part of Germany, about an hour by car from Frankfurt. If you're in that part of Germany, I highly recommend a visit. Its most famous sites include the Gothic Church, the Old Bridge, and the ruins of the Heidelberg Castle. From there, we took the train to Berlin. The train is really the best way to travel in Europe, in my opinion, and I'm not saying that just because I hate flying. When you get to Berlin, the best way to get your bearings is to take the river tour. You'll get to see some of Berlin's major landmarks, like the Reichstag, the Museum Insel or Museum Island, and the Berliner Dome or Cathedral. Inside the dome is a small museum and if you make the trek to the top, you will be treated to a panoramic view of the city. Definitely worth the effort. If you're going on foot, I recommend you start with a visit to the Brandenburg Gate. Take a walk past the war memorials of the Tiergarten until you make it to the famous Sigisoya or Victory Column. That whole area looks amazing during the day, but looks even more spectacular at night. After Germany, we flew to the UK, spending time in both Oxford and London. We were in Oxford for my wife's class reunion, so we both know that city pretty well. In London, we hit up some of our favorite spots. The view from our hotel room looked out at Westminster Bridge, Parliament, and Big Ben. Being a big James Bond fan, I had to, of course, have my photograph in front of the Secret Intelligence Service building, also known as MI6. And if you saw Spectre, no, it didn't really blow up. The building is fine. We also took a day out to take the ferry down the Thames to Greenwich, site of the National Maritime Museum, and the old Royal Navy College. There you'll see a representation of the actual Meridian Line, the imaginary line which runs from the North to the South Pole. It's marked on the grounds of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. If you're interested, I've got more photos in both my Instagram and Flickr accounts. I'll leave links in the video description. Now, if you're like me who likes to change his wristwatch every day, when you're going on a long trip, it makes you have to think about, and there's always a bit of a dilemma about this, as to which wristwatches you should take with you. So what are the things you have to consider in, first of all, selecting the wristwatches to bring? And second, how do you take care of your wristwatches when you're on the road? Now, one of the first considerations, of course, are the occasions you're going to need a wristwatch for. Um, so that includes things like, are there any formal occasions uh, that you need a wristwatch for? And therefore, what kind of watch is appropriate for such, an, uh, such a formal occasion? Uh, the other thing, of course, is what other activities are you going to be undertaking? Uh, are you going to be swimming? Well, does that mean that you need a waterproof watch? Um, are you going to be doing any outdoor activity, in which case you might need a watch that's a little bit tougher? Now, some people are really, really strict about the rules when it comes to matching their wristwatches with their clothes. And I have to admit, I'm one of those people. Um, and what that means is, especially when I'm wearing a watch with a leather wristband, I have to make sure that the leather wristband, the color of the leather wristband, match matches my shoes and my belt. 
Um, and usually that means that they all have to be around the same color. Some people might opt for something that's a little bit more neutral, like a watch with a metal bracelet. Uh, then you don't have to worry about things like colors and stuff like that. Uh, but then, of course, you might have to consider things like dial color or bezel color. So there's quite a few things that you want to think about if you're that type of person who really likes to spend a lot of time uh, you know, matching your wristwatches to the rest of your outfits. But at the bare minimum, you have to make sure that you have the right kind of watch for the right kind of occasion. If you're going diving, then obviously you need to have a watch that you can take underwater. If you're going swimming, you should at least have a watch that is adequately water resistant. Um, and if you have a formal event and you're going to wear suits or you're going to wear tuxedos, then obviously you, know, you might want to think about a watch that's appropriate for that. One more consideration, of course, uh, and this is something that I had to take into account as I travel from Asia to Europe, is you might want to have a wristwatch that allows you to track multiple time zones. Uh, so on this particular occasion, I had decided to bring with me one of my GMT watches. Now, one of the big considerations, especially if you're taking expensive time pieces with you on, on the road, is security. Now, you probably don't want to wear one of your expensive wristwatches when you know that you're going to be walking around in outdoor markets or places that are very crowded, especially when these are places that are known for pickpockets and petty theft. Now, what you want to do when you're traveling with your wristwatches is, of course, keep them as close to you as possible. And that means take them in your hand-carried luggage or in your backpack or in your suitcase or whatever it is that you're carrying with you. You do not want to check it in uh, with your check-in luggage. Now, there are some airports where airport security will actually ask you to remove your wristwatch as you're going through the security scanners. Um, don't, of course, you know, argue about that. But if I were you, the best thing would be to take your watch off, put it inside your hand carried, um, and take that through the scanner rather than just take your watch off and leave it in the tray. Um, there are so many stories of watches disappearing, you know, not necessarily because the security guards guys are taking it, but sometimes other passengers are the ones you've got to look out for. And of course, when you're in your hotel room, always check them in. Hotels usually will provide some kind of a safety deposit box or a small safe inside your hotel room. Uh, that's where you keep your wristwatches when you're not wearing them. Now, finally, the last thing you want to think about is how to protect your wristwatches from damage in transit. So I've actually bought uh, something called a watch pod, which are little containers made of very strong nylon uh, designed specifically to carry watches. They're small enough so that they fit nicely. Again, whether you've got, you know, a backpack or a hand carried piece of luggage uh, or even a suitcase. Um, they're small enough to be able to carry uh, all your wristwatches with you. What you want to do is keep these watches individually so that they don't, there's no chance that they'll scratch against each other or scratch against anything inside your bag, um, which is why I like to have these specially designed cases uh, for my watches. They're widely available on Amazon and I highly recommend that you look them up. Now, how many wristwatches do you take with you? Of course, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I travel with as many as three different wristwatches. That's two in these cases and one on my wrist. Um, it really depends on you know, how much you like to change out your wristwatches or how strict you are about you know, how to match your wristwatch with the right occasion. Uh, of course, the easiest thing would be just to wear an all-purpose wristwatch, usually something that's a little bit dressy, uh, that comes with a metal bracelet, so it's easy to mix with pretty much any outfit uh, and almost any occasion. Uh, but if you enjoy changing wristwatches all the time, these are the things that you want to think about when you're taking your wristwatches with you when you're traveling. Now, one of the highlights of this trip was the Heidelberg part of it, because I got to visit my stepdad. Now, my stepfather, many, many years ago, way back in, I think it was 1982 or 1983, uh, gave my brother and I uh, each a wristwatch, and it was the original Casio G-Shock, the very, very first Casio G-Shock ever. Now, unfortunately, that watch is long gone, but it kind of established this, I guess, you know, a little bit of a family tradition about giving uh, wristwatches as gifts. So because I don't really get to see my stepfather very often, I decided I was going to be the one this time to bring, uh, to give him a wristwatch. 
Now the Laco Flieger is a mechanical wristwatch, 39 millimeters, uh, made in Germany um, and designed uh, to resemble the Flieger watches or the watches worn by the Luftwaffe. Uh, this particular watch comes with a what's known as a B dial, uh, or the kind of di dial used by navigators uh, or bombers. Um, and in this case, you know, the minute uh, markers are more prominent than the hour markers because precision was much more important for these types of aviators. Anyway, for myself, it was quite a touching thing to be able to give my stepdad a wristwatch for a change, you know, rather than him giving one to me. And I guess it's another example of one of those things that makes wristwatches really, really special. I still encounter people every now and then who ask me why I even bother wearing a wristwatch, considering I tell time using my smartphone or, you know, there's all kinds of other devices, or even why I prefer, you know, like a mechanical old fashioned watch to say a smartwatch. And one of the things I like to talk about is that, you know, a smartwatch you're probably only going to use for a couple of years. I doubt very much whether your smartwatch will still be worn or even still be usable five years from now or even three years from now. Whereas, you know, wristwatches can stay in a family for a very, very long time. They're family heirlooms and in a lot of cases will continue running for decades. So this watch, for example, you know, even though it's almost 50 years old, I'm pretty sure that even 30 years from now, it will still be ticking, or in this case, humming. Um, but more about that in my next video. Okay, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon if you haven't done so already. Until the next video, Timberwolf out. Mm -hmm.